In 2019, Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition was released and completely reinvigorated the Age of Empires 2 tournament scene. Prior to its release, there had only been 9 1v1 S tier tournaments across 7 years between 2013 and 2020 on the HD edition. But in the past 6 years, there have been 37 1v1 S tier tournaments on the Definitive Edition. We are now well and truly into the DE era of the Age of Empires 2 tournament scene, and I wanted to find out who the defining players of this era have been so far which players have dominated tournament appearances, series wins, and how have these players developed or declined over the course of the past 6 years. In this series of videos, we will rank the top 10 players of the DE era. We'll highlight their strengths, weaknesses, and track their progress across the highest profile tournaments that have taken place since the release of Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. Before we get into the top 10, I first wanted to discuss some honourable mentions who did not quite make it into the list. The first and most striking omission from this list is MBL, who just missed out on the top 10 statistically but is still one of the defining players of the DE era. With his unique playstyle, off-meta strategies, and frankly hilarious co-casting style, MBL did not quite make the cut, but it would not do him justice to not recognise his contribution to the pro scene over the past 6 years. Other players who miss out include Sebastian, Sito, and Hart, who have all become mainstays in the S tier tournament scene over the past few years. And if this video was 2020 to 2030, I would imagine at least one of those players would make the top 10. The Max misses out through virtue of no longer competing at this level over the past few years, whilst Nikov, Dogao, and Bals also make it into the top 20. These players have all contributed hugely to the scene in recent years, but have not quite acquired the comparable number of games or wins of our top 10. In these videos, we will take a deeper dive into each player's most used civs, most played maps, and highlight extremes within that data. With that being said, let's jump into the top 10 players, and today we start with our 10th place player, Jordan. It is impressive that Jordan makes it into this list at all, considering he took breaks from competitive AoE in both 2020 and 2023. But since his return, he has signed with Onimaru and has had some impressive performances. Jordan has been competing in S tier tournaments for almost 20 years, and his skill and experience is undeniable. Jordan made it into the top 5 players for series win rate in 2021, followed by 9th place in 2022 and 8th place in 2023 followed by Knight again in 2024. Due to his break, he has not quite managed to get into the top 10 so far in 2025. As a player, Jordan has a pretty balanced record. There aren't a huge amount of anomalies in his data. The top 5 civs he has used the most are Byzantines, Lithuanians, Maya, Hindustanis, and Italians, which are all largely popular civs. His win rates with these civs hover around the average with only a few anomalies. His record with the Khmer and Tatars is pretty poor, with only 2 wins out of 10 and 3 wins out of 10 respectively. Those 2 wins with Khmer came against Slam and Bals in 2023, which are games you'd have expected Jordan to win anyway, particularly as that was his best year statistically. The losses did come to MBL, Leary, The Viper, and Doubt though, so it's hard to be too critical there. When it comes to the Tatars, Jordan's three wins include Kapoch twice and Tato, whereas his losses came to Hera, The Viper, Leary, Yo twice and Vinchester twice. So again, context is important here because it's difficult to be critical when the majority of the losses are against top 5 players, showing that these are more likely to be skill gaps than specific Civ weaknesses. Civs that Jordan has excellent records with include the Malians and the Turks. Jordan has won 7 out of 7 with the Malians and 5 out of 7 with the Turks. The wins with the Turks all came on closed maps as you'd expect, but the players were largely players Jordan would be expected to beat. These include Ganji twice and Lan in 2023, and then Freak and Andy in 2024. 
He did also beat Hera in 2022 though. His only two losses came to Doubt and Hera, which were also both in 2022. His wins as the Malians have come on a variety of maps against a range of opponents from Ziam Ziat, Daniel and Mihai to ACCM, Doubt, Tato and Yo. This has been spread across six different opponent sieves, six different years, five different maps, and four different map types, so this data suggests a little more that Jordan may have a particular affinity with the Malians. When it comes to sieves Jordan has played against, there are a lot more anomalies and extremes in the data. He does pretty well against the Dravidians, Japanese, Lithuanians, and Berbers, but has often struggled against the Franks, Chinese, Maya, and Byzantines. It is interesting that he also picks Maya and Byzantines quite often, so perhaps the best way to avoid these sieves is just to pick them yourself. As we've seen here though, there is a lot of context that affects these win records, so it's important not to come to any conclusions, but it is interesting just how many more extremes there are in his played against data than there is in his played for data. When it comes to map types, Jordan again has a pretty balanced record, with only two extremes coming from map types types that are played the least, water and chaotic maps. It is interesting that Jordan has 9 out of 12 wins on water maps, and only 3 out of 8 on chaotic maps, but there's so little data for these map types that it's hard to come to any real conclusions here. Jordan has, however, beaten some pretty notable players on water, which does suggest that he is better than average. He has taken names like Hera, Tato, Yo, MBL, and ACCM on his map since 2021. His only losses came to Hera, Doubt, and Tato. On Chaotic maps, again, the data is skewed to playing very high-level players. His losses on these maps over the years have come against Tato, Doubt, MBL, Hart, and Velez, all top S-tier players. Interestingly, three of those losses came on African waters, where Jordan chose the Celts all three times and lost all three times, twice against the Malay and one against the Japanese. On specific maps, Jordan's Arabia record tracks the average, but his arena record is a little bit below. He seems to thrive on land madness, enclosed, cross, and gold rush, but struggles on acclivity, outcrop, and arena. Taking any conclusions from specific maps outside the most popular maps is tricky, as we just don't have a lot of data to work with. An interesting thing about Land Madness, however, was that he has won each of those seven games with a different sieve and against a different sieve. And again, the players he's played are no mugs, defeating the likes of Hera, Tato, Doubt, Velez, Freakin' Andy, and Nikov, whilst only losing those three games to Yo, Freakin' Andy, and Kapoj. Jordan's development over the years is difficult to track because he has taken breaks from competitive AoE in both 2020 and 23-24. Even with those breaks, however, Jordan is still competitive in these tournaments. With a team like Onimaru behind him and an extended run in S-tier tournaments, I wouldn't be surprised to see Jordan reaching the latter stages of tournaments again over the next several years. Jordan has been such a huge part of the scene for so many years, and has been a constant figure during both the HD and DE eras. At 33 years old, it might be too late to make a run at the top 5, but it certainly looks like he's going to stay competitive for the foreseeable future, and continue to take games off the biggest names in the scene. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more of this content, and to find out who is in the rest of the top 10. Leave a comment below to predict who you think will be number 9. Thank you for watching this video.